Hello everyone, Wolfie Cast here bringing you the very first Hero Deep Dive video, starting with Ashlyn. Now this series is going to be where I take a character and I go through every single one of their uh, upgrades, both Tier 1 and Tier 2, tell you exactly what they do, exactly how they work, kind of show you some situations of them working, uh, and clear out any possible details of what the upgrade description might say versus what it actually does because those are unfortunately all over the place and we'll strap in because this is going to be a pretty long one uh, but like I said we're going to start with Ashlyn because we're just going to go in alphabetical order I think that's the most efficient way to do it a quick reminder that Ashlyn is a support hero with the tags utility and summoner so a lot of her upgrades actually revolve around that concept of supporting the team in various ways uh, so there's a fine mix of increasing her own capability and her ally capability, as well as upgrades that make Kador himself a little better, or possibly increasing both of their benefits in tandem. So it's very interesting to kind of see how it works. We're just going to jump in, actually just go right with her left mouse button upgrades. So slash upgrades. Uh, every upgrade tree, for those that don't know, every upgrade tree or sorry, every ability has an upgrade tree that has a left side and a right side. And you click the left side, that is the tier one upgrade, and then it'll evolve into the second tier. And I, you know, you see I click here, Father's Lessons, it changes to Father's Flame or Father's Reproof. But if I go back and I say hit Spectral Wave, it changes to an entirely different selection at tier two. So why is this important to bring up? Well, because... There are certain upgrades, and this this can be for any hero, not just Ashland. There are certain upgrades that don't actually really offer that much at tier one, but might actually have a huge upgrade at tier two. So uh, I will bring those up kind of as they come along. But but anyway, left mouse button. Remember. We're gonna start on the left side. It's called Father's Lessons. These uh, the upgrade description says buffs damage on Kator's victims. And the description actually reads, deals 25% increased damage to Sir Cator's victims. So what this does is essentially, you remember how when Ashlyn attacks someone while Cator is out, they get that white arrow over their head and Cator actually does more damage to them. This is basically that, but in reverse. So when Cator attacks, you deal more damage to those that Cator has recently targeted. And it's not a huge increase, like 25%... 25% on Ashlyn's basic attacks maybe do about, I'd say maybe 26 more damage per hit, which will add up pretty significantly, uh, but it's only her attacks, which is important. It doesn't buff his damage as well. His damage is already buffed by you attacking, uh, but the damage increase is actually somewhat significant in the long run, but it's, it's harder for Ashlyn just because her attack animation is slower while... Uh, while Cater is out of the blade. And this is something to keep in mind as well. Um, it'll read, it just reads that someone that Cater is attacked, it doesn't give a duration, uh, but this does do extra damage when Cater is also in the blade. And it's very, very brief. Like it's, it's something basically that I think really only lasts like two seconds. So you definitely notice it when Cater is out and attacking. Every attack just does a pretty good amount. But when Cater's in the blade, you will notice that this isn't doing very much. But moving on to the tier twos on the left path, we have Father's Flame, which says it deals 60 extra damage on enemies that are currently burning. And uh, well, you might ask, how does Ashlyn burn anybody? Uh, well, she's got a right mouse button talent that uh, causes a burn every now and then uh, when Cater does a special animation. But the important thing here is that it actually applies that damage bonus to anyone that's burning from any source it does not have to be from ashland it does not have to be from kator it does not have to be from a creature that you summon that does burning like a dragon it is literally if the target is burning then you do extra damage and this is actually one of the few instances where it's a flat damage amount it doesn't say like does 20 percent more damage it doesn't say 25 percent more damage it's a 60 damage like flat buff which is pretty big because it's almost 50 percent of the of the total damage like it's just shy of 50 percent extra damage with every single attack so long as they're burning it's pretty strong but the other side i should say it's pretty strong but i think there's 
too much of a stipulation to use it reliably. Like you, you need someone to have birding on your on your team, because there's just there's just right mouse button upgrades that are way better than the one that applies burning. Uh, but I'll get into that when we get to right mouse button. But the other side is Father's Reproof, which uh, applies a stacking weakness debuff starting at five percent for three seconds and stacks up to five times for a total of twenty five percent weakness, which is the standard uh, weakness uh, strength. So this is uh, this is only on Ashton's attack. Uh, Cater's attacks does not apply this. So I picked the upgrade. You see he's not getting weakened. But as soon as Ashlyn comes in and starts striking, you see that weakness happening. You can see that weakness animation. If you remember my status, uh, status effects upgrades, getting those purple glow around his hands, around his weapons, that's that's applying the weakness. And Cater is not, not to be out of the blade because it does it is sourced from Ashlyn's attacks. So Cater's does not need to be out of the blade for this to be in effect. And this is an this is an upgrade uh, specifically to Ashlyn. These are these are very few and far between. But this is something that very specifically affects Ashlyn, and it's very good for kind of just making sure a priority target is not completely shredding your team because of the fact that Ashlyn is melee. The, the melee range is very forgiving in this game like from from here I'm still hitting and look how look how far that actually is but from here I'm still hitting so if there are a bunch of enemies kind of in this tight forward square space you're you're applying that weakness to everybody so I think that this is actually a really good upgrade um I would say that there are probably other upgrades in her tree that you would want to prioritize but again that is just another opinion uh and at the end of this video, I forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, for this series, I am going to be doing two example builds, at least two, maybe three, depending on how I feel uh, about the character or if I think that there are multiple viable builds, uh, where I will do a build in skill upgrade order uh, and show you kind of how they work together. One more brief thing to mention before we move on to the other side tree. Uh, Father's Reproof, since it applies weakness, it's important to remember that weakness debuffs do not stack together until it's actually a stronger version of the weakness debuff. So uh, that upgrade says it applies a 25% weakness after five hits on the same target. And then other weaknesses could also apply 25% damage. That does not stack together to be a 50% weakness. It's only 25% because those two debuffs are considered the same condition. So something to be mindful of uh, in case someone else on your team has... Someone else on your team might have a weakness uh, in their kit. And you might not want to use that upgrade or maybe prioritize it later, um, depending on your build. But... Moving on to the right side tree of the left mouse button. It's called Spectral Wave. So instead of doing a melee attack, you shoot a piercing projectile uh, that affects all enemies that it passes through. There's also a cost where it does uh, about 35% less damage. You see kind of as I hover over uh, the upgrade or not, it changes from 112 to 80. But you're trading off the melee attack for the ranged attack. And that has that has its own pros and cons because honestly the the projectile is very narrow and it and weirdly enough it looks like it actually stops at the first enemy but it doesn't like if I go over here it has a travel time it is hitting both Nasus and the adult Motiga over there and uh, well you know you might think to yourself that's kind of interesting why would you you know consider that it's because the tier one itself is not crazy impactful, but the tier twos have some really good upgrades in them. But uh, before we move on to those, uh, it's important to remember here, you're losing your melee attack doing this. And Ashlyn is one of the very few heroes. There's there's actually only three in the whole game that can change from going from their either their basic melee attack or ranged attack and turning it into the other one. Uh, and when I get to those characters, you know, I will I will point them out. But this is important because normally Ashlyn can do just her melee attacks, which means she can do dunch, she can do jump attacks, she can do dodge attacks. You know, if you hit someone in the back with a jump attack, you're applying that cripple. And your your jump attacks and your dodge attacks do more damage than a standard attack. But if you take spectral wave, you see I'm doing a jump here. I'm not doing a dodge a jump attack. I can't do a dodge attack anymore because I'm just doing my normal dodge and then going to my basic ranged attack. 
So that is the trade-off. And th there are these tier two upgrades I'm about to get into are really good, but that's something to keep in mind because I think having Ashlyn be melee, the fact that she can change between melee and ranged is pretty cool. But uh, it's it, it has its own drawbacks as well. But moving on to the tier twos uh, of the right side LMB. Uh, left side says Spectral Might. On ally hit, buff damage for that ally for up to 5 seconds. A 15% damage boost, which is on their... I honestly am not sure. I feel like it's a 15... It says a 15% damage boost, which I think should apply to every source of damage that they deal. But it might only be on their LMBs. And that's something that I might test and come back to later. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty confident it is a global damage boost. It's not just their LMBs. It's everything that they do. And this is a... It's important thing about this is that it does not apply to Ashland. Because the because the wave is being shot in front of you, you're not actually getting that damage buff when you use it. But when this Motiga respawns, you can, you can watch as I use the projectile to hit it and it'll get that damage boost you will see yep the damage boost sword is applied it lasts for five seconds it's refreshed every time that you use it so you don't have to wait that full thing here and you, you don't you don't see it technically but the motiga this motiga is actually getting that damage boost you can you can kind of see it it's it's mouth is like faintly glowing but if i wait out that five seconds it again you can see that it's just something that you can reapply again and again and again even if an ally gets far away from you and opposedly to the other side uh spectral defense instead of spectral might does the same exact thing basically uh, a five second buff but this time it is 20 armor which is huge a huge amount of armor that you can you can grant basically permanently just, just from constantly doing this to someone that you're behind, like a frontliner or just behind one of your allies, kind of supporting them uh, in kind of this one-on-one -on -one brawl or or, uh, or just a, a firefight on both sides. It's such a huge damage mitigation bonus. 20, 20 armor is 20% flat damage reduction that that person is taking. It is, it is a big big buff and the fact that it's on an lmb means that it's semi-permanent oh that was that was fun um but that's those are the upgrades to slash um i think i think the ones i would cater to really depend on what i'm trying to do with my current ashlyn build uh but a lot of people say that the most supportive ashlyn is going to go uh the right side tier into spectral defense it's just really good now let's move on to the right mouse button upgrades. Cator's Command. Starting with the left side, just like the LMB, we have Cator's Charge. Uh, on a timed interval, which is a seven second uh, internal cooldown, buffs Sir Cator's damage on his next attack to deal 50% extra damage. Now, you might say, oh, well, Cator really only does 40 damage per swing. That's not really a huge increase. It would just increase it to 60 you know, 50% of 40 would be 20. 40 plus 20 is 60. It's not a huge thing. Uh, it is important to know, though. Again, I'll, I'll kind of show that here. Not doing a ton. But this does uh, this does apply that extra damage if they're marked recently. So see, that attack actually did a bunch uh, comparatively to just on his own. I'll briefly let it reset to show you. It's about three uh, attacks intervals for him, and it it's not it's not on his next attack. Like this, the upgrade description will read as though it's on his next attack. Now he just does this small area of effect <laughs> near him damage source that just applies that damage. So you just kind of see he will walk forward and it, it immediately trigger, and then he starts going into his attack cycle. Now, this upgrade on its own, not super great. I don't think that this is worth taking personally, just because I don't think you're really, I don't think you're really necessarily needing more damage from Ashlyn. Like that's not what you're picking her for. <coughs> but it is there if you need it. But going into the tier twos, uh, on the left side we have fast recharge. Which allows, it's the same exact thing, but it reduces the cooldown, uh, the internal cooldown from 7 seconds to 3 seconds. So, I'll take it right now. You'll see Kato goes in. He does this attack. 
he does this he does this kind of uh basically one cycle turning one attack cycle into two i think actually i need to resummon him hold on let me let me double check that this might be one of those instances where you need to actually resummon him uh and i'll get that in the right side uh tree of, of the right mouse button um but let me see really quick yep you do that and then he does his thing yeah, so that changes. That is something that you need to dismiss Kator before it actually goes into effect. Uh, but essentially, the uh, the tier one upgrade is after every like third, sometimes the second, depending on uh, if there are actually any enemies nearby, uh, he does the area of effect. But this upgrade changes that from once every three to once after every single uh, attack combo of so his burst area effect then four attacks burst area four attacks so you know that upgrade does make it better i think the tier one is pretty meh but the tier two that one seems okay and on the other side we have burning blade so this is what i said earlier remember uh i said that ashen only has a burn on a right mouse button upgrade well this is the one uh it turns uh, instead of the fast recharge making seven to three it remains at seven uh, but it applies a burning debuff that does 40 damage per second for three seconds that everyone get that get hit by that effect. So you get the upgrade, bring it in, you burn. See, Gnosis' hands are on fire. He's burning. And then Kator will do his animation again. After the third kind of interval, he does it. And there's the burn yet again. So again, I really don't think that you're going to want to go down that path on the right mouse button. Uh upgrade trees just because again you're not really picking ashland for the damage potential but it's there if you really want to do that now we're going to get into the right side of the right mouse button trees starting with cater's defenses Sir cater buffs arm of nearby allies and ashland uh so everyone that's within a five meter radius aura of cater is getting 10 armor and it says it says to allies and ashland it also applies to cater himself i don't know why I don't know why the, this description doesn't say that. It definitely applies to Kator as well. And this is uh, this is another one of those instances where you actually will need to resummon Kator before the effect comes into place. So you see, I have him out right now. I take the upgrade. It didn't do anything. Uh, you don't see an aura. You don't you don't get that armor bonus. But I will bring him back in. And then when the cooldown comes back, you will see the aura around him will appear, and it grants armor. So you see he gets the armor, I get the armor. There's this blue aura that surrounds him. Any any friendly creature that is in this aura is getting 10 armor, which is just a it's a 10% damage reduction for just existing. And since Cater Cater is integral to Ashland's like full potential. So he's always going to be out of the like he's going to be out of the be out of the blade the majority of the time. He's got a lot of health uh and he's got I think he's got pretty good defense. I actually don't know his internal personal defense. I haven't tested that. But just the fact that it's a 10% damage reduction for, for just being around. Like, you, you, I I don't think that there's any reason to not go this path. It's just even tier 1 on its own is so strong. Uh, but continuing on this upgrade tree. Left side is Kator's Might, uh, which applies a 15% damage bonus uh, within the same aura. So to Ashland, to Kador, to all allied creatures, uh, allied heroes, 15% damage bonus. And then opposed to the other side of this tree, Kador's Restoration, which is a healing per second, uh, 35 healing per second for everyone that is in the aura as well. So uh, again, like the again like the Kador's defenses, uh, you do need to resummon him before either of these come into play. So if I were to pick it up, I didn't get a damage bonus but I will bring him back in and then I will summon him back out again. And you will see as there are particle effects that show that you're getting damage boosts. So he got damage boosts. I got damage boosts. Everyone in the ring gets damage boosts. And then I'll go back. Cater's restoration. Resummon him. And I think honestly, Cater's restoration is going to be probably the most taken upgrade <laughs> on Ashlyn just in general you see this this constant you know the the shimmering aura of these light green you know plus signs that show that you're getting healed uh and they are surrounding him you can see they're getting surrounded him as well uh and the reason i think that this is the best upgrade probably in 
probably one of the best stories in her entire kit is the fact that this is the only way that uh, this this increases the longevity of Kator because you might remember from the Ashlyn's Basics video, uh, Kator does not regenerate health while out of combat on his own. So once he once he has low health, you have to bring him back in, or if he dies, you're gonna have to deal with the long cooldowns uh, and that short stun effect. But you know, Kator Kator goes over here and starts attacking this Motiga. His longevity in this fight is way bigger because of the fact that he's healing himself. You, know, you, you can see his health bar is staying full for way longer. And it's it's not a ton of healing. Like, don't get me wrong. It's 35 healing per second is not insane. But it is not something to scoff at either. And you can see he's out of combat, but he's getting all of his health back because he's got that self-healing that's affecting him. And it's just, it's permanent. It's permanent, like, so long as he's out. I, I can't stress enough how impactful this upgrade feels personally to me. I just, I love it. Cater's Restoration, S+. Plus, S+, plus upgrade. Next up, we're going to look at the upgrade trees of Q, uh, Cater's War Cry. Starting with the left, Chastise. Uh, if Cater applies that interrupt condition, which means that he has to interrupt a skill, of, uh, a, a skill from casting, so either a basic attack or something that's channeled or just so long as so long as an enemy is doing an attack animation you're going to apply that interrupt effect but what chastise does if you apply that interrupt the enemy is also crippled uh the crippled duration is three seconds it's a 40 percent movement speed reduction and they also cannot jump or take the effects or, or gain the benefits of a jump pad so this is a really good upgrade i think i think this is actually really nice um on its own I think it just applies a, a good amount of crowd control uh, to Ashlyn, which she doesn't have innately. Um, and it's not it's not an amazing crowd control, honestly. Like, a three-second cripple is pretty good. But there are, you know, better ways. There, there are better uh, crowd control effects from other heroes. But I don't think this is anything to scoff at. But you see, if I come over here, he starts attacking. You see, I interrupted. He's now crippled for that whole duration that three seconds it's it's pretty good and it's it's very very easy to do because activating q is instant it's it's very instant it affects a very large area so you can very easily apply the cripple condition to two three maybe even four enemies at once it's it's very very good can't hurt stand still um but moving on to tier twos uh, the next side is the Intimidation. On Cancel, uh, Sir Cater applies Major Weakness as well, which is a 50% uh, damage reduction for 3 seconds. So, it interrupts, it slows, cripples, and weakness all in one ability. It's pretty good. Uh, and I'll, I'll show that here as well. So you see over here, has that interrupt. You see he's slowly crippled. Ooh. I might need to resummon him, because it didn't show weakness. Kater's, Kater's upgrades are wonky. <laughs> or I should say Ashlyn's uh, upgrades are wonky. But let me try again now that he's been uh, dismissed and resummoned. Yeah, so there you go. So that is another upgrade that you have to bring him back in. But you can see, uh, or you might have saw the floating text. He was slowed, he was crippled, he was weakened uh, because I interrupted an attack. So that is that side. Uh, if we briefly go back, the other side is Cry More. Uh, again, a prerequisite of having to interrupt the ability uh, reduces the cooldown by 6 seconds, which is just shy of under half. Uh, it changed it from a 14 second cooldown to an 8 second cooldown, which is very big. I think that's actually a very good upgrade uh, that I, I... I mean, I don't know. A 50% damage... A 50% damage reduction to everyone that you that you uh, interrupt as well, or versus something that can be done more often... I think it's pretty okay. Um, just a reminder, you know, since these upgrades stack, it's a eight second reduction. It's an eight second cripple debuff with a three second duration. On an yeah, it's a it's an eight second cooldown with a three second duration, which is about th like a thirty three percent uptime if we're doing the math here. Just just quick math in my head. Um, so I mean, that's honestly. That's honestly worth it, but it's it's definitely both sides are definitely good valid options. Uh, but to show Grimor, uh, see I go over here, 
I apply the interrupt. It's a 14 second cooldown. And then I'll bring him back. I will get the cry more upgrade. It will go back over there. Got to wait for the cooldown to come back. So I'm actually interrupting. You see, 8 seconds as opposed to 12 seconds. Or 14 seconds. It's it's very good. And that, that comes back a lot sooner. So, it's a pretty good upgrade if you ask me. Now, on the right side of Q, we have the Spectral Barrier upgrade. So, when uh, what this does is when Kator roars, he does his war cry. He instead forms a dome around him that lasts for 2 seconds and blocks projectiles uh, from passing through. So, from within... They can't go out. From out, they can't go in. And it's specifically enemy projectiles. And why that's important is because allied projectiles can still go through. The game does recognize allied projectiles versus enemy projectiles. Uh, and the uh, the other important thing about this upgrade is that it removes the interrupt potential. So it'll, it'll still apply the slow uh, for that two second slow duration, but it no longer will interrupt. So... This is a this is a trade off for probably the more utility side of Ashlyn that's trying to defend more uh, against a bunch of range damage dealers and this is this is really viable just because of the fact that a lot of the range damage dealers in this game are very very good like they're some of the best characters that are in this game uh, in my honest opinion so this this upgrade on its own actually does a lot uh, but. You see, come over here. I kind of put that dome up. That fireball gets completely destroyed. It does not, uh, granted, it does not last for a very long time. But if you're going against a bunch of characters, like I said, or perhaps someone that has a very high attack speed, like maybe HK, that can be a, a huge game changer, especially if it blocks like one of his abilities, like Mortar or his uh, or his cannon, if he went the cannon upgrade or even his ultimate. Like it's a it's a huge shutdown ability. Um, remember though, that you are trading off the ability to interrupt, which means that it, you know, it's, it's less useful for being in kind of the big skirmishes. Uh, you can't interrupt, you know, creatures or players from gathering power. So it, it is a trade off, but I do think that the upgrade is really good. Uh, but moving on to the tier twos, these are not, these are not really my favorite to be very honest, uh, before I get into it. But first on the left side, spectral armor. Uh, enemy or allies that are within the bubble get 20 armor for two seconds. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, but you're really not gaining the benefit from this because the only, the only reason you're going to take the, uh, you're the only reason you're going to take the bubble at all is because you're wanting to deal with a lot of range damage. Um, if you're dealing with a lot of range damage, you're not really getting the benefits that much from the armor that this provides because there's probably only one or two melee attackers on that team and it, it's nice you know for those brief instances of of you know negating that damage a little bit um but i don't think this is i don't think this is a super great upgrade if you were to ask me but gives that armor boost it's nice doesn't last very long and then the other side is spectral lens uh and spectral lens basically anyone that's inside of the dome uh, when it's cast, a brief two-second window where they will 100% uh, crit with every single attack and ability. Now, that sounds really good on paper, but when you understand when you understand how crit chance works in this game, you're not really all that impressed by it. So, there's a brief lesson on on critical hit, um, and it's it's going to be very it's going to be very quick and basic. Um, but when you attack, you have a crit chance buildup. And at some point, you are going to reach 100% crit chance anyway for a duration just just so long as you're attacking. So if I go in over here and I start attacking, these, these attacks aren't crits. But if I just briefly stop myself and then I come I come back or if I or if I pause, I'm suddenly at maximum crit chance and all these attacks that that full yellow text will crit. And, you know, every every character has their own crit chance and, and crit window of opportunity. But for the most part, like, everyone has the... Uh, everyone can very easily reach 100% crit chance. So I don't think that getting... A, I don't think that getting an 100% crit guarantee is super great. Especially for, especially for only two seconds. Um, now, 
if you are going to go if you are going to go this upgrade anyway honestly this is probably the one to take no matter what but i don't think this is something that you should ever prioritize but it, it has its it has its nice little niche it, it does work uh but this is this is probably an upgrade that you're going to take last if at all now we will go over uh into the blade upgrades her e starting with the left side uh it's called swift return restore some stamina uh, and allows to allows uh, Ashlyn to sprint while she is using uh, while she's using the ability. So, if I were to if I'm moving here and I'm, I'm sprinting, I hold it down. I, I briefly have that window where I can still move, but I'm not moving faster because I can't uh, sprint while using it. Now I get swift return, and uh, I will show the stamina increase as well. So I'll spend some stamina by doing some dodges. I'll start running. quickly get that Oop. come on get get in combat there we go and I start running I can move at full speed and I see that again that 20 uh stamina so it's it's neat I think it's I think it's okay um I don't know it's it's not my favorite upgrade I I do think that it it's pretty okay it allows you to kind of get out of some uh slippery situations very easily uh, just because you you're not forced to slow down for that brief moment and if you really need that extra touch of stamina uh that in that moment like yeah of course it's gonna have its own brief window of of amazingness in that second uh but to for the for the tier twos uh we have spirited run on the left side buffs movement speed for four seconds 25 percent movement speed very simple and understand so use it speed boost Run faster. Four seconds worth. You can see the kind of the vapor trails as she's running. And 25% movement is actually pretty good. Um, but I don't know. I, I I do think the other side of the tree is much better. Uh, but before we get over there, we're going to go with the other one. Ardent Blaze. Gain 25% basic attack damage for four seconds. Now, this is different. You can see in the wording. Uh, and again, this is not something I'm 100% guaranteed on. Uh, but this does specifically say basic attack damage, which means very specifically your LMB. It's not all damage. It's not Kator's damage. It's only your left mouse button slash. So Ardent Blaze, you use it. You get that damage booster uh, buff. You can see kind of her hands are glowing at the base of her sword. It increases her slash damage. And this will be... Uh, well, I would say that it would be just for uh her and i could prove that to you but uh at the same time i can't really well actually i kind of can because if cater's not out and he and he's at full health and you just use e you can basically bring him back right away um but that's a that's another thing about e it's actually something that i missed on the basic video if he's not out and you just use e like it's his other abilities aren't cooldown but if he's if he's already out then the abilities go on cooldown I don't think there's really any reason to ever use E uh, while Gator's already in the blade, uh, but that is something that you can do uh, if, if you just need that moment uh, to get the benefits of, of your E and then bring Kator back right out immediately. You can do that. But again, just moves for basic attacks. And it's a it's a substantial, you know, damage steroid, uh, but I just I think the other I think the other side's better. Now onto the other side of the E upgrade tree. Uh, so we have shielding presence. Well, when you use E, you restore uh, a shield. You grant yourself a shield health, 250 shields for four seconds. Now, this is this is a good upgrade because it lets Ashlyn get just a little bit of extra buffer health. It's 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 very nice. It's not a ton of shielding, but this this has saved me more than I'm willing to admit. Just with that extra buffer of shielding. And for those that don't know uh, how shielding works. Uh, I, I would have explained it in my Rutger uh, basic upgrade. But I don't. Or basic video. Uh, but I don't think I've gotten that video posted yet. But how shields work in this game. Is that when. If you have a shield at all. The damage is divided 85% and 15%. So 85% of all damage that you take goes to the shield. And the remainder of that 15% goes to your actual health. So it's not it's not 100% damage blocking. Uh, you can't use it like if you're at like 10 health left and then you get 250 that that 250 shield and then you take like a source of I don't know 
uh, 75 damage or something, you're probably still going to die because it's not a full, it's not a full absorption. So it's, it's a little strange. It's, it's not, it's not like other shields in other games, uh, but that is how shielding works. So it's important to keep in mind, but use this upgrade. Very simple. You kind of get this little bubble of, of shielding around you. You get that little health bonus you see on, on the green bar, kind of get this extra like blue colorish upgrade or, uh, uh, effect. And that's what the that's what the tier one does. But the tier twos, oh man, oh man, the tier twos, uh, aura of healing. So what this does heals uh, herself and allies within three meters for two hundred. So instead of only doing one hundred healing, on the base ability does one hundred healing to herself. The tier two here gives her double the healing and gives it to all allies that are near her. It is really good. So if I if I go over here to this Motiga, and it, on on this side, I, I will wait for it to respawn. And I, I don't need Kator for this. I'm just gonna let him do his own thing. But I'm gonna let this I'm gonna let this Motiga take some damage. You see that ring around me? All all allies in that ring got healed for 200. And 200 is 200 is a good amount of healing. Now granted, it is a long cooldown, but that extra healing could be the difference between you know, life and death for, uh, on a fight, on a skirmish. Just suddenly getting 200 health is actually pretty significant. Um, especially for Ashlyn, when, considering that this is a tier 2 upgrade, she's getting 200 health as well as 250 shielding, which is, like, after the mitigation, that's... <laughs> it's like around 550 effective health. It's, it's so good. Uh, but... Uh, moving on to the other side, Peer of Spirits, and this is also a really good upgrade. And this is probably one of my this is probably one of my default upgrades. Like almost every single time uh, I go to this upgrade, uh, gives debuff immunity to self and allies within four meters for four seconds. Uh, of course, this does not apply to hit reactions. This this description says excludes interrupts. Um, being being immune to debuffs does not make you immune to hit reactions. So. Debuff immunity means things like slows or armor break or poison or burn or bleed. That does not affect hit reactions. Hit reactions like stun or daze or um, or interrupt. Like those those are not affected by this. But all allies in a, a, a larger than that healing ring getting debuff immunity for four seconds. It's so good. It's so good. Such a good upgrade. And honestly, a 16 second cooldown, pretty good considering, you know, it, it's the the debuff immunity has an, a good duration on its own. But the fact that you can use it pretty often, I think is severely overlooked personally. But those are her basic ability upgrades. And last but not least, we will go over Ashlyn's focus upgrades. Now, what's interesting about focus upgrades in this game is that it is extremely rare for any of the upgrades on your focus tree to uh, affect the focus directly at all. Most of these upgrades, almost all of these upgrades on every single hero will either be passive benefits or affect some other will affect some other ability sometimes it's your left mouse button uh sometimes it'll be just something that happens during combat only uh but a lot of the time these passives are are something that just are permanently active um but in this situation at least when we go into the left side here ghostly might uh circator has 10 percent extra damage that's that's about it so this 10 percent bonus damage on his attacks and this would affect the this would affect the upgrade on the uh, right mouse button as well. That kind of AOE attack that he does uh, on that internal cooldown. If you went that path, that would affect that as well. But uh, very simple, 10% uh, bonus damage to Kador, which means it would be his normal attacks as well as his augmented attacks if Ashlyn has marked somebody. And then it also says uh, while Sir Kador is in the sword, uh, your attacks instead are increased to 123 instead of 112. I think it's 112. Yeah. So small, small 10% damage bonus to Kador and to Ashlyn uh, separately. So only Kador gets the 10% and then Ashlyn gets the 10% bonus damage if Kador is in the sword. Only if he's in the sword. So pick that one up. 
Oop, didn't mean to do that. But I mean, you won't really notice here. But it's 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 a small damage output uh, bonus. It's very simple. It's always active, so you can't really you know go wrong with it. Uh, <coughs> moving on to tier two. Left side on guard. Uh, if I can, if I can have this move up just a little bit, please. Game. Just cutting off the bottom text. Well, anyway. On guard, uh, during attacking, while while attacking, while attacking, you gain a damage reduction, and it, it it's cut off on the bottom. But it's it's important to know that it is frontal damage reduction. It is only damage reduction in the front, and damage reduction in this game works exactly the same as armor, which means that there is a cap of of that that fifty uh, armor cap or that fifty damage reduction cap, and anything above that is almost negligible like almost just harsh diminishing returns uh, i believe is the term but it's important to know that uh this is only in effect in the front and only while she's attacking and attacking means basically anything that anything that you're doing that requires an animation so using your lmb using your rmb to move kator activating q using your e anything that ashton is doing that re that can be technically interrupted is considered attacking and while she's doing any sort of attacking, she has 20% damage reduction in the front. Now, I think on guard, I think on guard is a huge buff. And and this is this is something that you don't really this is something you don't really see, but kind of the, the 37 ticking, the 60 impact. And if I'm not attacking, I'm gonna take that damage. 75 impact, 37. So the the reduction is the reduction is not a ton, but it does add up significantly. I I think I think this is a really good upgrade. Um, now granted, it's not technically on Dgens because it's interesting because Dgens will not be affected by damage reduction, but they will be affected by armor, except for bleed, of course. Uh, so the impact of the impact of abilities, the impact damage of abilities that do a debuff, a degen debuff, will do less. But the debuff itself will not do less. Like the degen tick damage will not do less uh, with this upgrade. So keep that in mind. And then the other side is a upgrade called Will to Power. Uh, buffs damage and 10% damage reduction till death. So this, what this, what this is actually, it's an effect that only is it's a fact that only happens after you use your focus and the the reason you can tell there is because if you look kind of on the right side in the description that bullet point appears underneath the ability like underneath the description of what the ability does so this is this is effective one of these up uh up, one of these focus upgrades that applies only after the focus is cast this is not something that's permanent but it is still a passive uh, that will happen when you use the focus. So, kind of similar to On Guard, uh, except it's just On Guard is only when you're attacking, uh, and then Will to Power is less front damage reduction, but it's permanent. It's not. Uh, it's not only while attacking. It's just at all times. And then you also get a 10% damage bonus, which will stack with the 10% bonus from the tier one. Uh, so remember, the tier one was just a 10% bonus uh, to Circator's damage and also to your LMB. Uh, this does this increases basically the damage to 20% and then the damage reduction after using focus. Uh, and that's something that will show as a buff. So if I use the focus <laughs> and and Gnosis gets launched away, you can see I have now a, a permanent appearing damage bo uh, boost. And this applies to Kator as well. You can see that his sword is actually, the uh, the the handle of his sword is actually glowing as well. So that will to power damage boost also applies to him. Onto the right side of the focus tree with skirmishing and oh oh boy am I, uh, I'm gonna have a lot to say about this one. Um, this is another thing to bring up. A lot of the upgrades in the focus trees for every hero, you'll you'll see that some of them are shared actually. So there are there are other heroes that have this passive that have skirmishing passive. Some of them have like will to power that I just showed a minute ago. Um, but uh, to, <laughs> moving on from that, skirmishing says in the description 
In combat, restores 20 stamina per second. Outside combat, starts health regen two seconds earlier. So, this is so misleading, it's not even funny. First of all, the stamina restoration is not even correct. What it actually does, it, it makes it sound as though while you're in combat, you're constantly regening stamina, 20 stamina per second. And that's not the case. If I were to, you know, go over here and I spend my stamina, I'm not regaining any stamina back. What this actually means is that while you're in combat, you're gaining more stamina back if you're able to gain stamina, which means you're not you're not doing anything that uh, that spends your stamina. So if you're in combat, as long as you're not doing dodges, as long as you're not dodging or sorry, jumping or sprinting, you're regaining your stamina back. Now, what this ability actually does, <coughs> I will show you. If I if I go over here and spend all my stamina, I'm in combat because you can see the you can see the uh, glowing swords above my focus avatar. Those are uh, those are lit up. You're regaining about twenty stamina per second so long as you're regening stamina. That's that's what you do normally. With skirmishing. <laughs> Instead of 20 per tick, it's 25 per tick. And you'll see that. 25, 50, 75. I don't know why it says plus 20 per second. That is not what it does. As for the other part of the upgrade description, it says your uh it says your out of combat health regen starts two seconds sooner. Now, you would think, oh, if I were to do that, then that means, you know, I'm just starting to regain health faster. Not really. And I'll ex I'll explain this as I get to it. So if I take damage from this Motiga and I go down, I'll just I'll go down to like a thousand health or maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, this this is good. So if I run away and you'll see you don't start regaining health until you're out of combat. You see that that bar glows and then the the swords fade away and then you start regaining health and granted that is what it does now if i were to get this upgrade it says that i start regaining health sooner and i'm gonna i'm gonna do this again i'm gonna go down to about the same amount of health so this is this is pretty good and if i get over here and i wait till i'm out of combat the health is the same it's the same health regeneration so you might think it doesn't actually work what it actually does it gets you out of combat two seconds sooner you are considered out of combat uh you, you're only regaining health automatically like your health regen only kicks in when you're considered out of combat that's what the upgrade actually does and this is this is something that needs to be addressed and changed by the devs this is this does not do what the passive says that it does now it does actually work you know if you'll notice if i get in combat and then i run away that black bar kind of where the swords are in the in the above the focus that is that is draining faster you know you're not considered out of combat until that fully drains and the swords go from glowing to faded and that that does work and i do that i do think that that is pretty significant on its own because especially with uh especially with ashlyn because of the fact that you're not out of combat until either both her and decator stop attacking uh so if you can get further away faster and start that health regen it's gonna be noticeable but i I, I don't know. It's just it bothers me so much that the spell description reads that or the upgrade description reads that way because that's not it's not great. Like it's it's not it's it's so misleading. Um but it does work at least. So it just it's it needs to be more it need there needs to be more clarity here. I I, I hate this wording. It's really bad. Uh, but uh to tier two's pure escapism on dodge uh, you purify all debuffs from you. And this can happen on an internal cooldown of once every 20 seconds. So 
and this this does work as well i think that this is i think this is an okay upgrade um but you see that and then i dodge i get that cleanse and you can see uh on your target reticle as well as on the top right window of your focus bar that countdown kind of timer it'll f it'll go from black and fill up all the way to that yellow that's the that's the reset of the internal cooldown before you can use pure escapism again now i think pure escapism has its place um but at the same time ashton already has a really good debuff immunity upgrade on her e which i think you should be taking almost 100 percent of the time if i'm going to be honest uh so i don't think that this is really needed however i will not deny that it is useful you know if you if you really need that spot to, that spot dodge to cleanse yourself then yeah definitely take it especially if the enemy is running a lot of debuff heroes like Vodin or charnock on the right side of this tier two, we have hit and run, which is another one of those, another one of those uh, focus upgrades where you need to use the focus first before this comes into effect. Uh, but after using your focus, you gain a permanent ten percent movement speed uh, and a permanent plus ten armor until you die, which is, it's nice. It's 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 definitely helpful for especially on big maps um, or if you find yourself being the constant target of a lot of hitting. Or a lot of uh, a lot of enemy fire so as this looks like you see i pick it up i don't get any benefits yet but i use the focus and you see with the floating text you're getting those benefits so now i am permanently moving faster i am permanently getting uh got a little extra uh, bonus armor <laughs> which isn't visible but you know when you when you start taking a bit more damage you will notice that uh damage kind of increasing so I believe that does like 70 impact normally and then 34, 33 tick. Uh, but with the with that extra 10 armor that I now have after using the focus, uh, it is doing less. Now, those are the upgrades on her abilities. But there is one more thing to go over, which is the talent uh, upgrade. So the talent upgrade is here on the right. It unlocks at level five whenever you're in a match. And it basically gives your either your right mouse button, your Q, or your E one final upgrade. And uh, this is uh, this is also referred to as the Clash Talent. So it has an effect that happens immediately. And then every upgrade here has a secondary effect that only is active during the Clash. So why is this important to know? Well, because of the fact that uh, you might pick an upgrade that has a very negligible effect uh, effect so to speak uh and then when clash starts it actually turns into a much stronger ability but uh to go over them for ashlyn here we have the first one that says command performance uh which is the right mouse button talent uh it says sir Kador deals 40 percent damage on slash victims so or sorry plus 40 percent damage on slash victims so normally his slash victims uh you can see in the spell description here it says 200 percent this changes it to 240 percent which is okay it's an okay buff the second part though says clash circator's attacks uh on slash victims generate four focus so uh i believe what i was told and i may ask this again uh for further proof uh, but I was told that everyone's focus in the game is in intervals of 300 per rank. So you go from 0 to 300, you have rank 1. And then if you have 300 to 600, you have rank 2. Um, this is Kador doing his 4-hit combo and generating 16 focus every time. Now, this is on top of the focus that he already gives on his basic attacks and doing damage and any other focus, you know, resource that gives you focus. So this is this is an okay bonus. I, I think that uh, I don't really think that it's super noticeable um, with with uh, the focus generation. You'll, you'll notice the uh, the circuitor doing more damage. Like that increase from f uh, 200 to 240, it's pretty good. Uh, but the secondary clash talent, not super great. Now, moving on to the next one, Echoes from Beyond. 
uh, Warcry gains a larger radius, and then during Clash, Kator's Warcry restores 750 health to Kator. Now, this is something that I can show here. So if I hold this space, again, I, I showed this in the I showed this in the basic overview. This is the radius of of Warcry, even though it still only summons right in front of you. Pretty good, but if I pick this talent. And you will you will see it's it's not it's not an amazingly large increase to this the radius but it is a noticeably large larger radius see it, it just kind of turns that size and this is this is a lot easier to show if I if I uh kind of pick it right so like look right here good size and then I briefly cancel take the upgrade show it again maybe like a 20 percent size increase. <laughs> so it's okay. However, the health restoration is big. Kator has... I think Kator has at most, like, 1,600 health. Maybe a little more, if I'm counting these ticks correctly. So a 750 health restoration on a 14 second cooldown pretty good especially if you combine this uh with like the remember the chastise side has the cry more upgrade that reduces the cooldown if you apply that interrupt which is really really easy to do <coughs> if you think about it but that's it's just a lot of longevity on cater's uh healing or um um cater's lifespan now i think that's a good upgrade i would say however my favorite upgrade uh on ashland's tree is the third one called total recall a total recall says increases into the blade's healing by 25%, which is on its own, not a lot. It's uh, the base healing is 100, so which means that this would increase it to 125. But the class talent says when you are near enemies, within 10 meters of enemies, which is a, a basically melee range, um, reduces into the blade's cooldown by 8 seconds. Now, into the blade has a 16%, uh, 16 second cooldown, which means you are having the cooldown of this ability uh just with the just with the clash just for being near an enemy when you use your e which honestly if you're playing especially if you're playing melee ashlyn you really should be at all times like you really should be next to something at all times until you need to get out of dodge so this is really good especially when you combine it with this the uh this uh bonus shielding you get from shielding presence and that purify bonus now, remind you, the Purify bonus is a four-second duration, and with this Clash talent, the end of the Blade cooldown is eight seconds, which means you have a 50% uptime uh, up of being completely immune to debuffs for you and possibly for allies that are near you, especially if you have other melee attackers like a Margrave or like a Trip. That is a huge bonus to uh, to those characters. Now I wish that I could uh, I wish that I could show these a little easier, like showing the class version in uh, sh showing the class version part of the upgrade uh, in action. However, in offline mode, it's a little harder to do, to showcase that properly. Um, I may put some footage in here, kind of showcasing briefly uh, at least these two upgrades because they have a noticeable effect when you use them during clash. Uh, but I assure you that they do work, uh, and they're they're really good now. Granted, uh, this is something to say about uh, all Clash talents for every character. There are some that are just not good. And there are some that are here that you're going to pick based on what is currently happening in the game. And that's that's generally for all upgrades, honestly, like across the board. Y your, upgrade, your upgrade progression really should change depending on what is happening in the game. Uh, but I do think that Ashlyn has really good cases for both her q up uh, her, her q talent and her e talent to be used uh but that is everything about ashlyn now that i've shown you every upgrade that ashlyn has i'm going to go over two example builds of what i think is probably a more optimal way to play her now before i actually get into that i want to bring up the fact that some of the people that have never played this game before will not understand that the clash mode does not start you at level 10. Being in the practice mode right here, I'm already at level 10. I already have all my upgrades here to uh, dive into. However, 
in the normal clash mode, which is the normal game mode, uh, it's it's not the game mode that was during the playtest. The playtest was in rush mode, which is a predetermined build, uh, and you're already level 10. However, in, in clash mode, you start at level 1, and it's actually extremely rare for characters to get to level 10 unless it's actually like a really really long game that's evenly matched and it's just it's just constantly going back and forth with a lot of you know power gains and and kill feeds and just a lot of things happening no most games will actually end uh with most characters being around level six or seven maybe level eight if it's a little bit longer than normal so why this is important to bring up is because you get a you get an upgrade point per level so you have to prioritize which upgrades you're going to pick versus the others uh so some upgrades you know they might finish they might help finish a build but you need to pick the upgrades that will be your defining points of your build so you have to you have to kind of make sure you have everything that you need first and then anything after that is just an extra benefit now both of my ashland builds are technically support builds uh, but one focuses more on the melee aspect and the other one focuses on the ranged aspect of her kid so we're going to start with the uh with the first one uh the level one upgrade for me is always going to be caterer's defenses and then level two is caterer's restoration now what this does is quite literally at the beginning of the game everyone you and everyone that's near you is basically always at 25 armor uh and if they already have 25 armor then they're at 35 armor that early damage reduction is really big for the game uh, for the early points of the game as well as healing 35 per second for everyone that's nearby just for keto existing Kator has Kator has a lot of health. His health never changes. His armor never changes. He has extra little benefits, you know, that I've already described in the upgrades. But Kator, like as an Kator as an entity, like as a figure that's in front of you on the field, he does not change that much. So you're getting the best use out of him early by giving him those auras. He has incredible longevity, and the auras are just really big. And since he's so easy to move around. That healing and armor boost can go wherever you need it to. From there, I actually go into E next and I pick up shielding presence. And the reason is because if you're going to be in melee often, uh, you're going to be taking a significant amount of damage pretty off, uh, pretty frequently because you're just going to be in the front of fire. You're going to be under threat of the melee attackers. You're going to be a threat of the range attackers, whether Cater's there or not. And because there's a fair amount of AOE in the entire game, having that extra you know buffer in case you need to get out of there pretty helpful uh, especially considering that ashlyn only has 1500 health like let's not let's not forget that ashlyn is the same squishiness level in terms of health as like a typical range damage dealer so she's she's not bulky without this extra benefit but she can be deceptively tanky because of the fact that you already are running you know the extra 10 armor and from there it really depends because honestly you could move into either one of these two trees. Uh, if you find yourself taking a lot of extra like burst damage, this can be really good because it helps yourself and the team with your with your uh, sticking power. Uh, but if the enemy is running a lot of debuffs, uh, I said earlier, this is typically what I run. Uh, if they're running a lot of debuffs, this is just really good. Um, in t <laughs> full immunity for you and your team, at least anyone that's near you, when you cast this so good and granted you are losing the effects of cater's aura and uh his healing by doing this but the cleanse can really save the the cleanse can really save you or the team and in the end the power race to have the guardian like get to 100 before their guardian does that's what matters in the end so using this e using either one of these uh to save your team from getting killed can be really really big uh so uh, a, a good like 80 percent of the time honestly i'm gonna get pure of spirit just because there are so many debuffs and degens in the game and again remember that this debuff immunity does not stop things like hit reactions so you can still get stunned you can still get dazed you can still get launched but poison is gone uh burn is gone bleed is gone slow is gone cripple is gone just with this for four seconds i i cannot stress enough how big that is now from here it honestly 
entirely depends. And this this is going to be something that you're going to notice for every character that I'm going to do. Around level 4, level 5, you're going to find that you're going to need to answer to what the enemy team is throwing. Now, what I find is best because I like to play a I like to play a Brawly Ashlyn with this build. I go into Ghostly Might and then immediately on guard. Now, level 5 Level 5 is not going to give you a bunch. It's going to give you a little bit of extra damage if Cater's with you. It'll give you a little bit of extra damage if you have to get Cater to retreat. So it's not doing much on its own. However, the on-guard benefit of having 20% front damage reduction while you're attacking, which you're going to be doing a lot, <laughs> that is a 45% damage reduction basically permanently, so long as you're getting hit in the front, which happens pretty often because you're just in the in the heat of it there's also a good time to go over uh your clash talent because it unlocks at level five which you would have gotten it at the same time you picked the tier one of your focus with this build uh total recall is my go-to if i find myself you know if if there are a lot of points where the enemy is just very much clumped together uh or not even not even really clumped together but even just loosely clumped together this extra benefit is helpful but i think that into the blade uh total recall into the blade is so good i i've already went over with the uh, when i talked about this clash talent earlier in going over the upgrades i already told you the huge benefit of the clash talent within now this is one of those this is one of those things where the clash benefit comes much later like the the, the actual impact of this upgrade will come once clash comes now Granted, since I went pure of spirit, this is only giving me 125 healing. It's not a lot, but it's still better than, you know, what it was. Now, if I had gone aura of healing, that two, uh, the aura of healing increases the initial heal from 100 to 200 and affects everybody. And pure of spirit, or sorry, total recall increases that healing, which means that it's increasing the healing from 100 to 2 or sorry from 200 to 250 and then affects everybody and that's the same amount of healing i believe as sven's healing waters which is on the same cooldown uh and heals for the same amount now granted sven's pool heals for more if they're in the pool and there's also upgrades that increase the duration of the healing so in the end it's not going to do that much uh compared like it's it's going to do noticeably less in the long run but i think that that 25 percent bonus healing is super good now from here if you if you decide that you really didn't need to do this i think a good alternative is going into chastise chastise alone uh kind of getting that extra cripple uh if you are if you're being this melee skirmisher kind of Ashlyn acting like as a secondary frontliner, you're not going to be a tank with this build. You're, you're never going to be a tank as Ashlyn because she just doesn't have she doesn't have enough of the mitigation. She doesn't have enough of, of the tools to kind of act the way that a tank needs to. Uh, but this does help with that. It, this is kind of increases her engage potential uh, with the cripple and the major weakness. It's just, just or sorry, with the with the. Uh, Sorry, with just the cripple, because chastise just cripples. With the cripple, this is really good for uh, engaging. This is really good for keeping uh, enemies from getting away, um, and this is this is easier to use and and more reliable uh, to use than doing a jump attack, because you can apply a cripple to an enemy from jump attacking from behind. And if you if you need to use the cripple to prevent them from jumping high or using a super jump pad, like that's that's easy to do it, but it just costs a lot of stamina. Uh, but with chastise. It affects a lot of people. It does the same exact thing that you need it to, and it also interrupts. So it's it's just it's good on all fronts. And from there, uh, I would immediately go into uh, the second tier of this upgrade. And you could do you could really do either one here. Um, if you find yourself kind of getting everyone clumped together frequently enough in the aura to apply the weakness, uh, this is really good as well. Um, for the cry more, I think the six second, I think the six second cooldown reduction is actually pretty significant. I, I said this earlier as well. I think this is a huge upgrade. Um, granted, if, if you really need to use this more often, I think you could substitute this a bit earlier. I really wouldn't, I still really wouldn't get this a, like 
beyond level f like maybe not as early as like level five at best if i really really felt like i needed it because i think prioritizing your right mouse button and then your e is really really good um but i, I could see you getting this around like level six maybe level five if you feel like you need to uh if you can uh briefly put these one one of these two on hold but I would definitely go for either one of these. Like these are both really good. And then finally, I mean, if you this is around level eight, so this is usually when the game would be uh, ending, <coughs> or like reaching you know the final, the final initial push for whichever side is winning the game. But with this build for melee Ashlyn, you would go into father's uh, father's lessons and then into father's reproof. Uh, I think this is useful in every situation. Uh, this you know, this is a father's uh father's flame is a huge damage both bonus like 60 flat damage bonus on every single auto attack is really big however it just the prerequisite to get it to work i think is just too uh it's it's i wouldn't say it's too uncommon but it, it just i don't know the, it's against father's reproof which always works you know you're gonna be in the fray you're gonna be attacking very often you're going to be hitting at least two people, hopefully every time. And even, even if you only get like 10% or 15% over the course of the, of the debuff, like it's still useful. Uh, but this is definitely, this is definitely the end of the, of the line as far as what upgrades I think you would get. So that's, that is the build and I'll, I'll do a quick, uh, go over of it again. So quick version for, uh, for those that want the TLDR. Uh, level one defenses, level two restoration, level three shielding presence, level four. Either one of these are fine. Almost every time I would go pure spirit. Level five would be uh, ghostly might, and you would get your clash talent, which would be total recall. Level six on guard, level seven chastise, eight cry more or intimidation. Both of these are really good. And level nine father's lessons, level 10 father's reproof. And that is my melee support Ashlyn build. Now we go over build number two, which is it basically provides the same role of a support style character because that's what Ashlyn is, but it is ranged. So obviously the upgrades, the, the upgrades kind of surround spectral wave prioritizing early. <coughs> and you would think, oh, level one, obviously spectral wave. No, I think for this build personally, I would still do Cater's defenses first and then into Cater's restoration. And the reason is because you cannot, I, I will never say that this is not worth it every single time. The, the, the aura of healing is not something that is, it's not huge. Like 35 per second is not big, but it can really, really add up very quickly in longer engaged skirmishes and early territory control. Now saying with that in mind, you get Spectre Wave, obviously, and then level four immediately pick either one of these. Now, in most situations, I personally would pick Spectral Might. And the reason is because Cater is already giving a armor aura. The aura will always give armor. The other armor up the other aura upgrade was Cater's Might, which increases damage to nearby allies, I believe, at by 15%. Now I would not sacrifice healing for a damage buff. So instead, I would get that damage buff on this uh, on this left side uh, LMB upgrade, Spectral Might. And you would say, oh, like 20 armor, you know, that's 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 a lot. It's pretty easy to apply. It lasts for five seconds. With with the upgrade that you're giving from Kador, everyone's already sitting at I, I said this earlier, everyone's already sitting at 25 armor just for being near Kador. And anyone that's already anyone that already has heavy armor is now sitting at 35 armor. There are so many ways to apply armor in this game. Everyone, everyone has, I, I, I swear, it seems like everyone in this game has some upgrade in their kit that applies damage reduction or armor, uh, or there are some that can, you know, grant armor to allies. Now I will say 20 armor to everybody means that Everyone is sitting at armor cap almost immediately. That's really big. 45 to 55, uh, sorry, 45 to 50% damage reduction for anyone that is getting hit by your spectral wave. It's pretty big. 
I, I won't lie, but I think that the damage bonus is going to add up more in the long run because eventually people are going to make up for this. People are going to make up for this loss in their upgrade tree somewhere. You know, they're going to have their own mitigation damage or there's going to be, you know, another source of healing. There's going to be another source of disruption that will nullify this benefit. I think that this benefit is way better personally. So that would be my level four. Now, from here, again, you you have to fully you have to fully answer to what the enemy team is doing. I think most people from this point on would either look at their Q and E and be like, OK, what am I dealing with right now? Am I seeing a lot of melee people that I need to like crowd control a little more? Or do I see that there is a lot of enemies and I can destroy a lot of, you know, powerful projectiles? I can use this to counter Amani focus. I can use this to counter HK focus. I can use this to nullify some homing rockets from TMAT. Like this is this is really good. It's it's entirely dependent on if there are more ranged or more melee on the enemy team however at the same time i could use the same logic for the e upgrade if i find that i need to protect myself a little more i can get the shield if i find myself or if i find that it's the same exact logic as the other build if i find that there's more burst damage i can use this to heal myself and everybody or i can use this to grant everyone debuff immunity if there's an enemy Voden, if there's an enemy charnock like this these are both really significant. So these, both of these upgrades, both of these trees can be really, really good. Uh, I, I really don't think that there's any reason to use Swift Return. Uh, if you just, if you really just find yourself constantly at a point where you need to get out of dodge quickly, you need that extra bit of stamina. I would say if there's like a huge map, like if there's if there's like a really really big map like Siren Strand or Sanctum's Falls if you're if you're on either of those like maybe but I just I don't know there's shielding presence is just really really good but for this build if you're playing the more utility support uh, with ranged damage being the most effective in the game right now I would say pick up Spectral Barrier now I don't think you need to pick either of these I think these. I think these upgrades are so incredibly like nil value that you just don't even need to worry about them. So from here, you're level five. And again, you need to look kind of what's going on here. I don't I don't think command performance is good. I think Echoes from Beyond and Total Recall can be really, really big. Uh, I would say, I, I don't know. I would still honestly pick Total Recall with this build every time. Now, if you... If you really want to, you know, gain the full benefits of uh, getting that dome and have just a bigger dome for more protection, you can use Echoes from Beyond. But Total Recall, still really good. Now, this build, I think I would go from here to Shielding Presence and then Aura of Healing. I think that would be generally what I would do. You're doing a lot of healing with this build. Like you're you're providing you're providing the uh, bonus mitigation from Cater just existing, the bonus healing from Cater existing. You're giving everyone a damage boost that is getting hit by this. So you're 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 helping like your mid range uh range uh, mid range damage dealers. You're helping your melee damage dealers, and then uh you're just providing you know that that huge aura. Oh, I need to resummon Kator. That's why I was like, wait, he didn't make the barrier. No, I need to I need to resummon him. But like you have the lens to help protect your backline. And this is this is really all you need because what are you level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? This is this is really about the cap of where you would be. Uh and anything after here would just be extra. Now, I will say because you're less mobile just by default because you can't do jump attacks and that that does affect your mobility because there are gaps that melee heroes can make because they have that extra boost of jump attacks so i would actually say from here you could really probably do skirmishing and then pure escapism uh the reason pure escapism is because i said earlier the mobility uh having that extra cleanse effect for yourself is helpful and since you're not getting pure spirit, or you you might not consider getting pure spirit, I should say, um, that self cleanse can be really beneficial. 
And then from here, I mean, honestly, if I have to pick, if I had to pick either of these two, probably would do spectral armor. I, I think both of these are just meh. Like you really don't, <laughs> I don't think you'll see the impact of either one of these. Um, but if I had to, if I had to pick one, like since I'm forced to pick one, if I reach level 10, uh, spectral armor every time. But that is the, that is the ranged support Ashlyn. And again, like the other build, we're going to do a quick recap. So level one, Cater's Defense. Level two, Cater's Restoration. Level three is Spectral Wave into Spectral Might at level four. Level five, I think you could probably run uh, Spectral Barrier if there's a lot of melee, or uh, sorry, a lot of ranged. And then level six, sorry, with the Clash Talent, uh, you'll get Total Recall. And then level six, you will pick Shielding Presence with Aura of Healing. Then level seven, or at, yeah, level, sorry, level eight is going to be Skirmishing. Level nine, Pure Escapism. And then level 10, Spectral Armor. But that is the full deep dive for Ashlyn, as well as two builds that I've made. And just as a reminder for everybody, the builds that I will showcase with these examples are just builds that I think are good it's entirely totally my opinion if you find a better upgrade path if you find a different way to do something that works well for you by all means please do it if you want to explore the more damage side of ashlyn like she has damage upgrades she can be a damage dealer uh but i just think you're giving up i think you're just giving up the utility that she provides uh but by all means if you want to play that if you want to play that ashlyn like skirmisher uh almost an assassin type like she definitely has that build in her upgrades somewhere you can make it work uh but that is that is the deep dive so thank you for watching i know this was a long one uh and if you enjoyed watching if you learned something please make sure to like and share and i will see you guys in the next deep dive so have a good night